Okay, this is the last part of the murder mystery game, part three. We are on objective five, and we're going to get right to the end to see who was the, mur the unaliver of Nathaniel Green. Let's do this. Okay, so who? going back, just a little recap of objective three and four. Um, there was, or the little summary, I mean, sorry. There was people that had temp tampered with the evidence and who did it. So we were also figuring out some code. And objective three, there was another crime that had been involved, which was extortion, stolen art, and hotel theft from the from Nathaniel's hotel. There was a bunch of evidence. And then there was evidence that was tampered with. There was a camera that was switched. And there was a new character named Julius, who is a who is apparently a bad person or is kind of a shadier on the shadier side. And there was a message from Brad who is one of the suspects or persons of interest in code. It's called pig pen code. And we, we did that and it said, Julius is a poacher and I will get proof tomorrow what he sent to Nathaniel. And the three people who are who have tampered with evidence is Sandra, Zachary, and Brad. So I believe one of them is the murderer or an aliver. Um, what do you guys think? So from the five, spe five, so in objective five, the objectives are who wrote the threatening letters, give two reasons, and from five total suspects, which three have solid alibis? So we'll go down here. The photograph of Julius and Cheryl holding a fresh wolf pet. Phone number from Sandra Phillips. The interrogation of Cheryl Ford. Good afternoon, Miss Ford. Thank you for coming in. We'd like to ask you a few questions about your your relationship with Nathaniel. Of course, Detective, I'll help you in any way I can. We've discovered a photo of Nathaniel's on Nathaniel's camera that seems to be of you purchasing an animal from Mr. Julius Haywood? Well, I can't say I'm entirely surprised Nathaniel was always the curious type, but that photo won't tell the whole story. That thug Julius tried to sell me animal pelts once and I chased him away. Can you expand on this? He approached me one day trying to sell me animal pelts. It was disgusting. I told him to get lost, but he's been lurk lurking around. I wouldn't put it past him to be involved in his in Nathaniel's unaliving. He's trouble detective. What did you think of Nathaniel? How well did you know him? Nathaniel was like family. He'd come around um, into the bar often, always chatting with the staff and the regulars. He had a warm spirit and he was part of the fabric of this place. <coughs> Excuse me. Can you provide an alibi from where you're about on the day of Nathaniel's death. I was working at the bar. So Cheryl was working at the bar throughout the day. Cheryl, I think she was, she was the bar owner, right? So she was alibi working the bar throughout the day, during the day. Okay, and then, um, do and then I only took one hour break you can ask my staff they'll vouch for me thank you for your cooperation Miss Ford if you think of anything else that could help us please don't hesitate to contact us I just hope you can you catch whoever did this he he deserved better than this Okay, so she obviously, I don't know, um, but what did she do on that hour break, right? Oh, I believe, okay, let's see, let's see, let's go to the clues, because the clues are always very helpful. Objective five clues. 
Does the paper and handwriting look familiar? Who wrote the oh the threatening letter? The paper and handwriting. I feel like Sandra wrote the letter, that threatening letter, because that paper looks oddly familiar. <clears throat> Or Julius. In the note, there's a phrase, pretty little girlfriend. I've seen that before. Who said pretty little girlfriend? Ah, Julius said that. So maybe Julius wrote the letter. I'm going to say Julius wrote the letter. Okay. Now, who has good alibis? So, clue suspect. One of the suspects was out of town. Who could that have been? Phillips. Uh, I'll go through all of them again. Who is out of town? It wasn't Cheryl. Let's see trails. Um, who is, let's see, Zachary? Says, yes, unfortunately, I was hiking trail E today, but I got near the end. I noticed something in the rocks in the main pathway. So if I see, oh, it wasn't Zach. Was it Brad? I think it was Brad, actually. I lost. Same night, I went out for drinks, stay late. I dropped my phone on the way home. Hmm. I thought it was bad. I gotta re-look at this. I saw that a few days before he died. Top, he described, uh, do do Have a separate work phone. I was away and figured I was Okay, so I guess he, so Brad had a solid alibi and same with Cheryl. That was my guess. Let's see if I'm right. And Ferris, who wrote the threatening letter? So it was Brad, Julius, and Cheryl that all wrote the threatening letter. But, why does this not help? So, that doesn't make sense. See, I think she's, this person's missing some things on here. And then, objective six is, comes to the big conclusion of who did it. So, number six. We're certain that he was behind the threatening letters. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Sounds like Nathaniel is getting close to his poaching business and he was trying to scare him off. We're keeping an eye on him. New evidence, we've called in employees of Cheryl's and taken statements off of them. There's one in particular that was of interest and we've also grabbed a map of the trails that shows how long it takes to each section. It's pretty interesting as well. Who do you think committed the murder? Give three reasons that makes you suspect the person. So who did it? Is the question. Clue one. Brad says that he lost his phone and notebook while out drinking. So Brad lost his notebook. Okay. And phone? Well... Out drinking, okay.
Good afternoon, Ms. Peterson. We appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. We would like to ask you about Cheryl Ford's whereabouts on the day of Nathaniel's passing. Of course, Detective, I'll do my best to remember. Can you tell us if Cheryl was away from the restaurant at any point that day? Yes, yeah, Cheryl actually took a super early lunch that day. It, took in, it stuck in my head because she usually takes it late or not at all. She left the restaurant around 9 in the morning. I didn't see her until 11.10. I have my suspicions of Cheryl from the beginning. Um, I didn't see her again until around 11.10. I needed her help with something, so I was searching frantically. Do you know where she went during that time? I'm not entirely sure. She might have been in her office. She's usually in there when, when she's not in the restaurant. But to be honest, I didn't see her that time. Mrs. Peterson, I'd like to know more about your working relationship with Cheryl Ford. What it's what's it like working under her? Working with Cheryl has been great. Detective, she's been a fantastic boss, very friendly, approachable, generous. She treats us well. In what ways does she know her genero show her generosity? Well, for one, she often lets us take food from home to bar leftover food. That's still good, of course. And you know, sometimes people leave things behind that end up in the lost and found box. And there, too, there for too long, she lets us have them. Is there often a lot of stuff in the lost and found? Oh, definitely, especially on busy nights. Drunk people are always losing stuff. We keep it for as long as possible. But after a few months, we can take stuff home. And she's accumulated a lot of stuff over the years. Is there anything you'd like to add about working with Cheryl or anything that might help our investigation? Cheryl's been a great boss over all. Things were rough a couple years ago when business wasn't doing too well and we thought we'd all be out of work. But she th turned things around. We got raises this year. She looks out for us and I've never had any complaints about her. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. This chat has been very helpful. If you remember anything else or have anything further, please don't hesitate to reach out. So I have a, a theory that Julius, because she's shady, she works for Julius to keep the business running and um, Nathaniel got too close to the truth. So there are six trails to choose from. Every trail has designated viewing resting spots equidistant from each other. Trail A has a resting spot for every 20 minutes. When the trail has been a resting spot, when trail B has a resting spot every 10 minutes, you can use the image below to see how far the resting spot is on your trail. Each resting spot is designated with a large black circle like this one. Please note that time will vary depending on walking speeds, while times represent the quickest time you can make to the resting stop. And then there's CCTV footage of Julius in New Market Mall, 10.30 a.m., July 31st, 2023. So he obviously has an alibi, sort of, but he passed away early in the morning, right? Or he was knocked on his feet. So I'm going to go, I don't know. Clue two, the poaching business is very profitable. See what I mean? And now it's making the bar more profitable. Anyone involved in it would be making a lot of money. Okay, so Cheryl is definitely involved with the coachable business coachable business clue three someone's alibi doesn't account for the time when Nathaniel was murdered to me that sounds like Ju Julius or Julius or no wait hold on clue three Someone's alibi doesn't account for the time when Nathaniel was murdered. Um, so, Julius and Cheryl. I think it's, I don't know, it's between Brad, Cheryl, and um, what, would, well, what did it say? What time did it say? Uh... That's basically when she was murdered. Well, when was Brad, in my opinion, you know? Someone's time wasn't accounted for. Mouth one. My guess was, my thought was Brad.
or Zach. Okay, so trail A. Huh. Maps. Hill star. Okay, and maps. Look on the ship. Okay, so we did it. We need Ezianza. Oh, I see. That's why I'm... Oh, you had to pick. That's so confusing. Okay, so Cheryl. Cheryl was the killer. Yay! It was because he was going to report the poaching and she couldn't have that. That makes sense. That's why I was confused as to why. You had to pick. Okay, maybe we... Uh, that, Oh, gotta go through it again because that was confusing. Okay, so the full story. As we here's the full truth behind Cheryl's unaliving Nathaniel. And we have created the end. Now that I know this one, I'm gonna go and do it again, but with a different story just because of because of yeah, it was just like confusing. I didn't realize you had to choose one. I was like, all three of them did it. So now I'm gonna go through it again. Okay, you solved it. Map show that she was the only suspect able to reach Nathaniel during the time of his death. Staff statement shows that business wasn't doing well, but suddenly had an influx of cash. It also shows that Cheryl had access to lost items such as Brad's lost notebooks. See, I was right. Photos and of Julius and Cheryl shows that she has dealings with poachers who may be involved in their business. Click to read the full story. Okay, so as we came down on Julius's poaching business, he quickly turned on Cheryl and threw her under the bus for a better deal. She was solely responsible for the murder of Nathaniel. She had found Brad's phone and was snooping on it when he received the message from Nathaniel about planning to get proof for the of the poaching. So everyone was good but uh, Cheryl. If I didn't realize you had to choose, so that's why I was like, all three of them wrote the letter? So I'm going to go back and see who did what, and I'm going to do that right now while I go, uh, after I read the story. Okay, if she only had access to the phone, she wouldn't have been able to read the encoded message, but unfortunately, she had Brad's notebook as well, which had all the ciphers she needed to read the code. She quickly put together a plan to get rid of Nathaniel. She was pretty sure that Brad didn't know about Julius, as she had intercepted the message but she thought it thought is safe to discredit him just in case by framing the murder on him she knew the two men were very well and it was easy to come up with something believable she messaged nathaniel from B brad's phone to lure him out to the trail uh, to trail a that was closed in this way she wouldn't be spotted in the act she then went about planting evidence that would point the investigation towards brad she created a tree note to resemble the one she'd been on hikes before. She knew that Brad would be painting this, his house that day, so she used regular house paint for her tree notes. Her tree notes, this is something that eco-conscious Brad would never do. However, she was unaware that Brad would be called out for out of state for work, giving him an airtight alibi. She also placed a shovel that Brad had lost in the bar at the crime scene to the further incri incriminate him. Cheryl assumed that she could get to the top of a trail A and back without anyone noticing. She was gone, but one of her staff did notice. Nathaniel had been keeping notes on the various traps he found surrounding hiking areas and was reporting them to police. He, he was also doing his own investigation to find out who was involved. During this time, he bought an engagement ring and was planning to propose to his girlfriend, Sandra. The threatening letter from Julius made him back off of his plans and leave him leave instead for her safety. Julius's poaching business was very profitable, but didn't have... A means to launder his ill-gotten cash. Cheryl and Julius or Julius got into business together whereby he would sell his pelts 
on the black market and then run the cash through her legitimate business for a fee. Be- they be- this became a very lucrative endeavor for both parties and Cheryl soon found herself deep into the proceedings business. An unlucky set of events, some keen detective skills put away these dangerous people. That's cool. I'm going to put my name in for a 15% off the next order. Okay, what do you guys think of that one? I was kind of confused. I want to go through it again. Um, just because I want to go through the one. I was just very confused. Like, would they, all three of them wrote the letter. All three, you know, it, was, it wasn't clear 100%. So I'm going to do this quickly. And we're going to go through the answers. Because... Am I not, what, why is it working? There we go. I'm gonna go through the answers because that was, I wasn't, I wasn't sure. Okay, so answers from objective one. Does this case need further investigation? Of course it does. Why this case needs further... Oh, because you're supposed to choose why it needs further investigation. So, newspaper, Facebook, Cheryl, binocular, Cheryl, Zachary, whether... And you're supposed to choose one. So, binocular... Oh, weather, binoculars, and Facebook. So, it's a multiple choice on here, and you have to go through it. My phone wasn't... (laughs) Um, anyways, so answers, subjective so two, why did Nathaniel take trail A when it was closed? He, it always, so this is what it says, it, he just didn't care that day, trail A was open and safe, he was tired of trail B, it was raining. So trail A, that's why I was so confused, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So trail A was open. What evidence do you have? Tree note in Facebook photo, Brad's interrogation, Sandra's text messages. Um, it was, was it, the tree note. Brad had left a secret note for Nathaniel. Trail A is open and safe. But it wasn't him, it was Cheryl because she was texting him. Or through his phone that he lost um, in the bar there. So objectives. What is the other crime? Hotel theft, stolen art, or extortion. So it wasn't all three. That was really confusing for me. Sorry, guys. My apologies for doing it wrong, but now I know for the next one. Stolen art, hotel theft, or extortion. And it was hotel theft. No, it was just stolen art. Okay. The evidence, the threatening note and photo. Nod's interrogation report. Threatening note, photo. Camera photo and news article. Perfect. Okay, that was objective three, four. Who tampered with the evidence? It was Sandra, Brad, or Zachary? Zachary. Proof. Camera brand name, number, and property sheet. Perfect. Zachary had stolen Nathaniel's camera. When he found the body, he deleted the photos off his camera and left it with Nathaniel's belongings. Probably because he didn't want to be a suspect. Answers. Objective five. Who wrote the threatening letter? I want to say Julius is what I thought, or Julius. Which three suspects had solid alibis? Um, Sandra, Zachary, Julia sent the threatening letter. Um, Brad has a hotel invoice, Sandra has a photo of her taken by Zachary at her house, and Zachary, who took the photos, would also not have been able to get Nathaniel in time. I gotta be more clear on this stuff, and clearly pay attention, or something, I don't know. Okay, and then lastly, who killed, murdered, unalive Nathaniel, Cheryl, why, reporting poaching, and then the full story. He didn't, I was like, three of them, and then I just clicked. I don't know why that didn't occur to me till later. Um, I'm going to do this again, but write and understand it. Um, For some reason, I did not understand why it was like three options, three people doing it when they were only asking for one. And then I didn't realize it was like a multiple choice and you had to click it to get the right answer. 
anyways um it was still fun to go through some of it was um i had a feeling right from the beginning it was cheryl i don't know why something was telling me like it was her she was the suspicious one anyways you guys have an awesome rest of your day and we'll chat soon i hope you enjoyed it please let me know if you would like to see more of these or what or um what else, what other kind of board games, these are going to be specials again, so we have a, a whole week and then one next week special, and then we'll do it again next month, maybe we'll do like a, a like a, a Valentine's Day one, anyways, you guys have an awesome day, we'll chat soon, bye now.